Good afternoon here in the Netherlands and welcome back to the online open day of the Han University of Applied Sciences. In the first session earlier today, we took a look at what it is like to study at the Han. So we shared with you some peculiarities about life and studies. In this session, we are going to talk some practicalities about admissions, applications and housing. Of course, I'm not going to be doing that alone. So joining me today, we have Rafael and Mihaela. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being here. Let's get to know you a little bit better. So, Rafael, would you mind telling us a few words about yourself? Yes, of course. Well, thank you for having me here. I am currently a fourth year, so final year automotive engineering student. I'm about to start my thesis project, uh, my thesis internship. So I'm, I'm almost done with my journey here at the Han. Nice. Welcome here. And Mihaela, how about yourself? Um, glad to be here. Um, I'm Mihaela and I'm uh, part of international marketing and recruitment at HAM. Great, welcome. Now, as we are doing in every session, you, um, there is a chat box within the live stream. You can ask away any questions that pop up your mind. We will be answering those questions live in the chat box, but we will also be addressing some of those questions live here at the end of each and every segment that we will be sharing with you. Right. Let's jump into the topic that we have uh, and let's first take a look at what the application looks like. And Mihaela, I know you have a lot of um, experience with that and we have also prepared for you a little slide where you can see uh, a little bit what the application procedure looks like. Um, so would you mind walking us through that? Here yes, of course. Um, the um, application procedure at Han is um, quite easy to do. Um, the first step is, um, yeah, for all uh, students interesting to apply to one of our programs is to check the admission criteria. They are on our website, um, so do a good check beforehand to see uh, what you have to um, uh, to fulfill in terms of requirements and also what kind of documents you need to submit. And then it's quite simple. Um, the application process starts um, uh, through StudyLink. StudyLink is a centralized application system for the Netherlands. That's where um, students can find all the programs in the Netherlands and all the universities in the Netherlands they want to apply to. Um, yeah, making a login, uh, putting the detail, com filling in the details there. And then when you chose your program of interest um, and the university, um, the application will be sent straight into our um, application system of the university. Um, there, um, uh, you will receive notification with uh, everything you need to do. Um, and your um, uh, next step is to uh, go to the My Application portal at the Han University of, Appli of Applied Sciences. There you can see all the documents you need to submit, like we need a, a passport photo, uh, we need a, uh, your um, grade list um, and your uh, final diploma when you have it. Uh, the English proficiency requirement is in there as well. And uh, students can just, applicants can just upload the documents. Um, it's quite easy, very user friendly. Um, there you also see what the next step after that is uh, to participate in a matching interview. Um, so we'll take you in your My Application portal through all the steps that um, yeah, you need to take uh, to finalize your application and hopefully you're going to be accepted. Thank you, Mihaela, for outlining for us what the application looks like very much in detail. So I'm curious to learn from Rafael, how did you experience the application procedure yourself as a student? Yeah, well, when I was applying, it was um, very daunting in the beginning, of course. Uh, I think every student, when while well, they're applying, it's, you're nervous for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But I think um, something that helped uh, calm me down was exactly what you were talking about, which is all this, this entire process is backed up by constant emails and constant notifications of how your application proce procedure is going. Uh, also constant reminders of things you still have to do uh, and a lot of help as well. There's the help email for, for the HAN, for, also for housing for, and for the application itself, where you can just ask whatever question and pretty, they're very efficient in, in replying. So all in all, my application procedure was, was really nice, aside from all the stressful times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite refreshing to hear from you that uh, despite the fact that it can be quite overwhelming to be applying for yeah. a new study, regardless of the study program that you're applying for, it's good to hear that there is always some sort of support um, backing that up. And it's also nice to hear that being confirmed by you, that you had that yeah. as, a, as, a, as an experience um, directly as a student. 
Would you say that there were any challenging parts of uh, the application process for you? Yeah, I would say there's always uh, some sort of challenge, right? For me, that was um, the um, college level classes that I took. Uh, my high school is American based high school in Ecuador. And um, we have AP level classes, uh, and th get, getting the credits for those uh, for those classes that I took uh, credited to me uh, through for the Han was a bit uh, you know there was a bit of extra steps uh, required to to prove that I, I have taken a certain class and all that because normally here uh, you accept in Europe it's a IB diploma is more mm -hmm. is more prominent but. Even with those uh, extra steps, it, it wasn't really a problem. It was just uh, a matter of asking the right question and then doing what, what I was told. Yeah, because Mihaela, how do you deal with the, for, for example, of course, you must have seen a lot of different uh, scores being submitted to you, a lot of different grade systems. How do you deal with the diversity of those grades? Well, my colleagues at the admissions office, mm -hmm. uh, I think they've seen almost every um, uh, high school diploma or bachelor diplo diploma under the sun. Uh, you can imagine we have a lot of applicants from all over the world, uh, from different countries with different systems. Um, so my colleagues usually know their way around. Um, all uh, applications will be uh, evaluated individually. Um, and if there is something that we're not familiar with, we will find the resources to properly evaluate the diploma or help the student or the applicant um, uh, submit the right documentation that we need to proceed with the evaluation. So one way or the other, uh, we're, we're, we will um, evaluate uh, the, um, uh, all the applications uh, based on our standards, of course, and our admission requirements. All right, so say that I want to start with my studies in September 2023. Which date would you recommend me to apply? As early as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do we have any deadlines that you want to share with us? There are deadlines uh, for non-European students um, that want to start in uh, September. The deadline is uh, 1st of June or 1st of May, depending on the program. That's why it's important to check our website or the program of your choice. Um, and um, oh, we also, for some programs, have a February uh, application, and that is 1st of November for non-European students. For European students is uh, 15th of August for September, and 15th of January for February, but, <laughs> and I'll make a but now, um, uh, it is very important that students apply early. Application opens on the 1st of October um, in the previous year before uh, the start. Uh, so for September 2023, application opened already in uh, 1st of October in 2022, um, which is uh, important so people can students can prepare and, and take things easy and not uh, uh, rush or um, um, have uh, stress. It's, it's, it's a nervous process. I mean, it, it's emotional, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to start looking for housing as soon as possible. Um, so it's good to have the application behind you, uh, to know whether you're accepted or not, and then to move forward with arranging other matters such as housing. Yes, thank you for bringing that up and we will definitely be talking more about the, the housing challenges and the housing tips and tricks also later on within this session. So thanks again for pointing that out. Um, so, uh, but Rafael before was also mentioning that of course there is a number of uh, documents that which you need to submit alongside which um, also the, uh, for example, the submission of your grades. So I was wondering when is a student eligible to apply and are there is there like a specific score that you're looking for at the admissions? Well, as you mentioned before, uh, different countries have different um, mm -hmm. uh, grading um, systems. Um, we do take that into account. I think what is important is that you have stu studied the required subject for the program of your choice at the right level. Um, so we look at how many years did you study that, what is the level of uh, the required subject, and we will also look at the scores, but a, a passing score should already give you access um, uh, to application and uh, hopefully to acceptance. Yes. And uh, some of the viewers from home might have already looked into some of the uh, practicalities about the admissions procedure, which go alongside the, the process that you outlined earlier. Uh, and in some cases, there is also written that you need to show a proof of your financial guarantee. Would you be able to tell us what a financial guarantee is and when it's needed? Yes, of course. Well, once a, an applicant has been accepted, uh, to be able to finalize the enrollment and become a student, a student needs to pay the tuition fee. For European Union students, uh, uh, they have to pay 
only the tuition fee and take care of the living cost by themselves. But for non-European students, they are um, uh, um, required to show that they have proof of sufficient means of living to live in the Netherlands from our immigration um, and naturalization department in the Netherlands. And we bundled all that into a package that is called financial guarantee. And the financial guarantee includes the tuition fee and um, uh, the living cost and other services as well, like medical insurance is included in there, housing for students that want to benefit from uh, housing from the university, and also a part for the, of the living costs. So we bundled that to make it uh, easier for our non-European students, but also to um, yeah, observe the Dutch immigration law. Yeah, and uh, and the slide that we had just seen uh, earlier just shows uh, a little bit the, the amounts that you can expect when it comes to the, the different financial guarantees based on whether it's a bachelor's, it's a master's, yes. and um, where you're from as well. Okay, so um, talked about that. Um, I also wanted to go back a little into the outline that we saw earlier with you. So what are the different steps that are um, taken into consideration within your application procedure? And I saw that, well, you, you mentioned the, the matching interview as well. Uh, and I know that, Rafael, you had to do a matching interview um, within uh, enrolling for your program. So would you mind explaining to us what that is and how you experienced that yourself? Yeah, so matching interview, the objective is to essentially match a student with the correct uh, bachelor. Uh, of course, the student chooses the bachelor and through the interview you just make sure and kind of help them guide themselves through this process and also make sure they're making the right decision. So connect the correct bachelor to the student. Um, for me, of course, uh, even though I was told this uh, very well in advance, I was extremely nervous. You know, I was uh, I was getting ready for the interview. I was uh, nice with my shirt, you know. <laughs> uh, it was very early in the morning because it's on the other side of the world. So right, five in the morning, zones, ready, yeah. you know. Uh, recently out of the shower, everything nice, <laughs> nicely done. Uh, and then I get to the interview and, and when it starts, it's like, extremely casual the tone the first couple of questions were extremely friendly were uh, extremely calming especially in this situation as uh, as an as a as a student uh, it, it felt really nice and then the first couple of questions set the tone for the meeting and 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 then i realized this was more about me personally rather than than academic you know, so yeah. it was it was about figuring out what uh, what do I want to do if I'm making the right choice. What do I like? Also about living in the Netherlands. Uh, so I, I got a great overview on all that. It was it was a really nice experience. And who was interviewing you actually? Uh, my interview was with a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly who it was. No, uh, no, of course. I was just wondering like what kind of. Ago. Yeah, what kind of interview or you can expect. Yeah. Because I know from you that uh, during your studies at the Han, um, you have also been working as a matching student, which means that you were also acting as an interviewer to some of the upcoming international students, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, so I was wondering from you, like, what kind of questions did you ask to the students that, that were uh, lucky enough to have a conversation with you? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a funny cycle, right? I was in mm. the interview, now I'm doing the interview. So I have... Um, I have this. I already have the perception and the idea of what students are feeling like mm -hmm. right as they're going into the interview. So I try to do exactly what I felt, make it from the beginning, sort of break the ice and 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 let them know that this is nothing too formal. This is more of a casual conversation between between a future student and well me as a student as a current student to sort of get to know them, to answer their questions, to 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 aid them, to to help them. So. One of the ways I break the ice and, and, and I used to uh, keep it uh, standardized for all the interviews I did was I would ask students what their favorite car is because I was doing the, inter the interviews for automotive. And that, uh, you know, if you can really tell if someone is really passionate for automotive or, or for studying something like that by the way they answer this question. Of course, you don't need to be passionate about automotive to really study this, but it does help figuring out if that's really what you want to do. So it was a very helpful question. Of course, and thank you very much for, for sharing also your experience um, being an interviewer for, for the matching process. I think that's also for the people watching really, really valuable to know more or less what they can, what kind of conversation or interview they can expect whenever they are faced with, uh, with that part of their application procedure. But before we wrap up with the segment on application, um, 
uh, is there anything, Mihaela, that you would still like to share uh, that goes along the admissions procedure? Yeah, well, I, I, I want to actually tie into uh, what you just said about matching. And I think the takeaway from this is that we want to have the right student at the rank right place. We want our students to be successful. Um, and matching is one of the tools we have uh, that goes both ways. So not only for us as a university or as a program to check to see, uh, to see whether um, um, the, the ambitions and the, the uh, soft skills, for example, match with what we have to offer, but it's an opportunity for the applicant as well to check to see, is this exact what I want to do, do I see myself here? And also an opportunity to ask questions that they, or share their doubts um, about, uh, would I like it there? And um, so it's a two-way street. Um, and I think the takeaway is, again, uh, we want our students to be successful. And it starts already with the application process. That's part of it. Great. Thank you for, for this amazing contribution. And I think that's also a very great way to close off the first part of the session, which was about uh, application procedures. Um, with this being said, I would like to also take a moment to remind you that you're welcome to ask questions away within the chat function of this live stream at any moment. And we will be addressing some of the questions at the end of each and every session. Now, with this being said, we're moving on to the second part of this segment, which is about housing. And in order to get familiarized a little with uh, what this is all about, we have prepared two videos for you. And we're going to take a look at the first video of what the housing application procedure looks like for non-European students. Did you know Arnhem and Nijmegen are two of the best cities to live in for international students? Are you a student from outside the EU? Stick with us for just a couple of seconds to see how to get a room. The first step, already paid the financial guarantee, including housing. Our housing department will start arranging a room for you. Then Han Housing will send you an e-voucher within two weeks of payment. Are you starting in September? Then they'll start arranging a room in May. Starting in February? Then you can expect to be notified in or after December. You can use that voucher within one week to choose a room on the Book Your Room website in your preferred location. The quicker you are, the more choice of rooms there is for you. Choose the room that suits you best. You can also choose additional packages, like kitchen utensils and bed linen. SSH and provides the rooms in Arnhem and Nijmegen for Han students. You will now receive the housing contract from them. Sign it and send it back. Congratulations! You will receive an email from Han Housing before the start of your contract, with information about the check-in time right before the start of your study and more. Finally, come to check-in week and pick up your keys. Time's up. What now? Make it a nice home. Welcome to Han. One last thing. The contract is always for one year or one semester for February starters. You can find the locations of Han housing rooms at hanuniversity.com slash housing. All right, but are you a student from the European Union? Then let's take a look at this other video that addresses what the housing procedure looks like for you. Did you know Arnhem and Nijmegen are two of the best cities to live in for international students? Are you an EU student? Stick with us for just a couple of seconds to see how to get a room. The number of rooms we're allowed to offer as a university is limited. We work with waiting lists on a first-come, first-served basis. After enrolling, send a request to han.housingoffice at han.nl as soon as possible so you get added to this waiting list. In the meantime, we recommend you also look for a room nearby on your own. Han Housing will send you an email with tips and tricks for finding a room. In your own search, don't forget to check if your room is furnished or if you still need to buy furniture, for example, secondhand. In June and January, we will know how many rooms are available for the Han waiting list. Based on your place on the waiting list, you may or may not be sent an e-voucher. Use this e-voucher to choose your room. Once you've chosen, leave your payment information as soon as possible. SSH and provides the rooms in Arnhem and Nijmegen for Han students. You will now receive the signed housing contract from both of them. Congratulations! You will receive an email from Han Housing before the start of your contract with information about the check-in time right before the start of your study and more. Finally, come to the check-in time and pick up your keys. Didn't get a room through Han? 
continue your own search. Found a room for yourself? Keep in mind that you'll need to pay a deposit. This can add up to a few months of rent. And time's up. One last thing. If you rent a room from SSH and through Han, the contract is always for one year or one semester for February starters. After that, you need to look for a room yourself. You can find the location of Han housing rooms at hanuniversity.com slash housing. All right, and we're back with Rafael and Mihaela. Uh, so, Mihaela, would you be able to summarize for us really briefly what the main difference, uh, differences are between housing processes for European students and non-European students? Yes, of course. Mm, that in the Netherlands, there are very few universities that have their own campus buildings. Um, and um, usually most universities and Han University of Applied Sciences also works with a partner um, that does have the buildings and manages them. For this reason, the number of um, rooms that we have available for uh, students are limited. Um, also taking into account that in the Netherlands is a bit of a housing shortage uh, at the moment, so that makes it a bit more challenging. We do offer, within the financial guarantee that we talked earlier about, um, two non-European students um, guaranteed rooms for one year, which means that non-European students will have priority in uh, getting a, a room from Han University of Applied Sciences. If there are any rooms available after we have placed um, the students, um, then we create a waiting list and we will offer the available rooms to European students as well. Um, so it's on the basis of first come, first served. So make sure that once you apply, you already indicate very early in your application process that you want a, um, a benefit from um, a room from uh, the university and then you will be placed on a waiting list. So I think these are the major points that um, applicants should take into account. And of course, European Union students should start searching for their own accommodation very early in the process. As early as possible, really. Yes. Rafael, how did you experience the whole journey of looking for accommodation yourself? It was uh, very stressful, um, of course because uh, of the current housing situation in the Netherlands. Um, sometimes reading all those news and, and looking at how the situation is can, can make you stress uh, quite a bit. Uh, but I think the, the explanations and the platform provided by the Han really helped uh, so soothe that, uh, that stress and, uh, and find a room, of course. Uh, with the waiting list and, and all the options given by the Han with the, in, in their housing website where you have all the links uh, to all the well, the websites and the companies that provide housing for students. Um, once you once you go through that, you start realizing, okay, it's 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 uh, tough, but it's not impossible. So there's still uh, as long as you as long as you dedicate some time to it and you actively check uh, every week, I would say. Uh, it should be fine. That, that's how I felt. Really yeah, close. because you had to go through uh, the same procedure as the one that Mihaela outlined for European students, right? Because despite you're from Ecuador, you could also apply through your uh, Italian passport. And am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So then, what did it mean for you? Did you also have to look through uh, for housing through like independent platforms and not necessarily only through the Han? Um, I had to do both uh, because I have uh, European nationality and I was applying as an Italian. Mm -hmm. I do qualify as a European student, but um, physically uh, I was in Ecuador, so I, I did also have had the disadvantages of all non-European students. Uh, the fact that I live all the way on the other side of the world and I mm -hmm. couldn't... Uh, it wasn't that feasible for me to come and visit and, and find a room on my own like that. I did receive uh, some extra help, but yes, it was more of, uh, of fending on my own, trying to look uh, for a room myself, but the hand did actually help me quite a bit. And I would say that if it wasn't, uh, if it was, if it wasn't for the hand, I probably wouldn't have found a place. Right, because yes. your first accommodation was, correct me if I'm wrong, through SSHN, yes. correct? And Mihaela, what is SSHN? Would you be able to, to tell us a little about this uh, organization? Yes, um, they are um, um, a company uh, that offer uh, student accommodations in both Arnhem and in Nijmegen, in our campus cities. Um, and they are also our partner. Um, so together with them, we are able to um, uh, offer uh, the rooms that we do have available uh, for our international students. And what did you find, Rafael, in your, in your room offered by SSHN? Was it furnished? 
Yeah, it was wonderful actually. I, it it had all the essentials. You know, I had a a bed, a very nice one, uh, for that matter, uh, a nice desk, um, and also well, a bunch of storage space and all that. So those are the basics already covered. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, the facilities were also nice. Uh, we also had um, washing machines and and dryers, which of course are essential. Uh, they were available for use whenever, so there was no time limit on that or anything like that. Um, also, the kitchen was really nice, everything. Uh, it was partially uh, filled with utensils, so mm -hmm. the first day that I was there, you know, I'm international, I'm new, I don't really know what I need yet, uh, but I arrived and I could, st I could still just go buy some groceries and make myself a meal uh, because I had just the basics, you know, some pots and pans and, and, and cutlery. Uh, so that was pretty great as well. Yeah, that, that's good to hear. And, and I, I think it's really good that you're also mentioning this aspect because I think that some of the people watching from home who are willing to, to be studying either in Arnhem or Nijmegen might also come to the conclusion that they have to figure out housing on their own. And in some cases, when you're figuring out housing on your own, it might be the case that you don't have all of the, the different utensils or furniture right away and that you might have to purchase some of them. So it's just something good to to keep in mind, um, uh, to have in general, because maybe upon your arrival you might want to be staying, for example, one or two nights elsewhere, uh, just uh, in order to have a, a, a little bit of lead time to also get your furniture and uh, get get your your space ready for um, for yourself living in it, basically. So uh, we saw with uh, Rafael that you had to go through the, the waiting list uh, process and it's also often the case for most European students. So Michaela, what are the chances if I apply as a European student and I get put on that waiting list that I still get a room? Well, it, it, it depends every year, of course, of, of uh, how many students, uh, how big the intake of students is. So um, I, I cannot uh, uh, give a, a percentage. Um, I think what is important is that students um, that have chosen to, to make use of the waiting list also in parallel start looking for housing on the, the private sector as well. So uh, don't place all your eggs in one basket. Um, um, put in the time, put in the effort, uh, because if one doesn't pan out, at least you can switch to, to your plan B. And may, sometimes maybe um, uh, students have preferences in how they want to live, where they want to live, um, and, and the private sector might be a better fit for them. Uh, but in any case, Please, uh, that is uh, always the advice, um, uh, explore both options. And what is your advice um, from the Han in case a student is not able to, to find a room upon arrival? Um, I'm going to circle back to what I said earlier. We want mm. all our students to be successful. It is an important step, uh, moving countries, uh, being away from the family. And we want uh, that to happen in the best conditions uh, possible, which means having a place to live where you feel comfortable, where you have the, uh, the, the uh, comfort and, and the, the certainty that you can apply yourself for your studies. So. If students do not find any accommodation, uh, especially European Union students, somewhere in June, um, uh, then I uh, we always advise to switch to Plan B, which is maybe postpone your studies with one year and try again the next year or um, explore other options. Um, yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's a, a vital uh, part of studies, having a comfortable place to live in. Um, yeah, yeah, very important advice for sure. Because, Rafael, when did you start looking for accommodation yourself? I started looking in March, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I actively was looking in March. Mm -hmm. By March, I started figuring out how this process pans out. Uh, and it took a while uh, before uh, you, know, you actually understand how you should go about this, uh, even with the help of, of, the, of the Han. Uh, as, a new, as a person that's new to this process, it, it took some time to figure that out, but I started in March and it was already very, very stressful starting yeah, at that and point. Yeah, it, it is late. I think you were one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so uh, <laughs> start early. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Uh, and what, what we also learned from the video is that um, in case you're able to get, for example, like you did, the SSHN option through the HAN, 
those contracts are only valid for either half a year for February starters or for one year for September starters. So I do assume that now you no longer live within the SSHN facilities, am I correct? Yes, I don't. And can you describe a little bit what your housing situation is like right now? Yeah, so now at this point I have branched out from uh, student housing and I think everyone should do something like this uh, eventually, you know, especially to leave space for the new incoming uh, students. Of course. Um, so I've branched out to a privately owned, so a private uh, landlord. Um, and although it was a tough and a very scary process, because, you know, nothing is certain when you, when you do this, uh, it was fine in the end. I have a really nice apartment. Um, uh, it's in a really nice location right in the center of, of Arnhem, uh, right next to my favorite park, Sunspeak. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, and it's nice, actually, nice uh, to have, uh, well, I do enjoy having, I did enjoy uh, having roommates, but it's also nice to experience having your own place, uh, being able to, you know, have your own uh, layout, your own kitchen, your own, your own everything, you know. So it, it, it's, it's the, uh, I like to experience both worlds, roommates and then having my own place. Absolutely. And I think it's really encouraging as well to hear these experiences because, I mean, we hear all the time um, experiences about the challenges of finding a room in the Netherlands, especially in Arnhem Nijmegen or yeah. in other parts of, of this country. But it's also good to hear that there are options out there and that you were able to successfully uh, find something for yourself multiple times because I also know um, you told me earlier that you had to move several times yeah. throughout your studies, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, and now you, you found a beautiful solution in a very nice location of the city and something that you're happy with. So there's definitely uh, plenty of those options out there. However, when it comes to privately looking for a place to stay, um, that in most cases entails, for example, Facebook groups or websites from rental agencies. Uh, and we know that an upcoming problem has been the, the whole scamming behind it. Uh, Mihaela, would you like to say perhaps a couple of words about this? Well, I think use use your common sense, uh, mm. right? If if your gut feeling says this is not a trustworthy, um, um, I don't know, link, um, yeah, d don't use it. On the other hand, I do have to say just a, a bit of uh, uh, some tips. Be persistent. Uh, be persistent. Uh, put yourself out there. Make maybe a short video of yourself um, uh, for a uh, Facebook group um, so people get to know you. I mean, I, I, I've seen students that um, said, uh, I can... I have great cooking skills, I can cook everything, and uh, right, uh, they got offers uh, from other students, you can come and join us in, in uh, uh, be our um, uh, room uh, roommate, for example. So um, be persistent, put yourself out there, uh, but be mindful, right? And check your neighborhood, if you saw, uh, I don't know, a room or a house or an apartment, Check the neighborhood. I mean, Google Maps, you can zoom in very far nowadays. So, uh, right, check the location. Is it close to campus? Uh, do you like how, uh, how it looks, how the surroundings are? So do your homework and, and be diligent about it. Um, Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, and I found it really funny what you said in terms of all of these applications for housing. Like even if you see something on a Facebook group, that's exactly the way that you should go for it. Use all of your creative skills to, to really like stand out because I mean, there's a pretty high demand. So I've also seen everything. And whenever I applied for my latest um, housing opportunity. I was also submitting a lot of different pictures of the types of activities that I do. Um, I submitted a whole text with uh, a lot of interests of mine to just really find a place also where my roommates would have uh, found me as a good match with the whole environment and atmosphere of the house. So in most cases it really works, but again, like it's really up to you to take that initiative to yeah. showcase your creative skills. And, and I see that Rafael is also nodding. Is that also what you had to do in order to find your uh, current place to be? Yes, absolutely. Um, you definitely have to put yourself out, out there for sure. Uh, I would say one of the pieces of advice that I could give for uh, people that would eventually uh, or already are looking for a place uh, privately like this would be to um, make a nice image of yourself you know it's like um, consider this as going to a job interview you, you wouldn't go to a job interview with uh, with a hoodie and, and and some jeans and and like that you know well of course it depends on the job but uh, uh, but that's how I made it work uh, yeah. you know this is an extremely social scenario that's all their first 
their first perception of you as a person is how you're dressed and then how you behave and then your your social situation they know that so um, you have to really and, and if so sometimes uh, it's hard to do this sort of thing but it's definitely worth it you just yeah. go there like you said put yourself out there and just be yourself and show them that they can trust you with their place yeah trust you to live there Indeed, I really very much like the, the comparison that you made with um, finding a job and going to a job interview. That's uh, actually quite comparable for sure. All right, and I have one last question before we jump into the questions that I see that are being asked within the chat function. Uh, and it's a question for you, Rafael. Um, what would you recommend bringing with you uh, mm -hmm. when you're moving to the Netherlands? So if you move, when you move to the Netherlands, I would recommend you bring a jacket. <laughs> that's the number one thing and number that's one the thing, number sure. one thing I don't I don't regret investing or just bring fitting it somehow in my luggage to bring here because I have had one huge uh, ski jacket uh, this whole time since I arrived to the Netherlands and it's been amazing because of course coming from Ecuador where the climate is uh, pretty stagnant the, the entire year um, to a place where there's you have seasons especially winter and it gets so cold mm -hmm. and rainy course has to be very good against water so waterproof uh, coming to a place proof. like yes proof, yes right? exactly <laughs> all of the different weather phenomena that are out there it has to be yeah. proof, proven for so those. coming <laughs> coming here with a thing with, with something like that to protect you is is a must for sure and aside from that uh something that i always like to recommend is you know one of the lar biggest struggles that uh, people have when they move away from home is actually missing home right uh, so what I did is I have a couple of little things, nothing too, nothing too big, that I brought from from home that have a lot of meaning for me. And you don't really have to put them anywhere special or anything like that. I would just put them on my desk, you know, just as decorative objects. And then every time I would be working or I would just glance at at those things on my desk, I would get a warm feeling of uh, of you know being at home and stuff like that. So that's. That's uh, I think that's a very important aspect for mental health when you when you move uh, away from home to just have something to help you cope with the fact that you're so far away especially as an international student. Yeah, I very much agree with you on that. Like absolutely. It's uh, it's quite nice. It doesn't need to be like anything too fancy or too uh, out there like it can be just like you said yeah. a couple of little objects that remind you of home and and for sure they make the whole process of uh, homemaking and feeling more at home uh, a little smoother for sure. And I think that's also a beautiful way to wrap up this segment on housing. Uh, and again, thank you so much for both of your inputs that were outstanding, really. Uh, and we do have a few questions coming up in the chat. So if you don't mind sticking around to answer those. The first one refers back to the first part of the segment, which was on admissions and applications. Uh, and the the person is asking, is it mandatory for all students to do an English proficiency test? Mihaela, would you like to take this question? Yes, the answer is no. Um, some students, um, based on um, yeah, certain criteria, are exempt from the English proficiency test. Um, think of um, uh, native speakers of English. Um, uh, they are not required to uh, provide an English proficiency test, uh, but also students that have studied uh, previously in English uh, will be exempted, and also a couple of other nationalities based on their um, national um, high school curriculum. Um, so there are exceptions to the uh, English proficiency uh, requirement, uh, but you will hear about that during your application process. There are also lots of resources uh, resources on uh, on our website. Um, and um, yeah, you'll, you'll hear quite, uh, quite quickly whether uh, you have to uh, do an English proficiency test or not. Did you have to do an English proficiency test, Rafael? Yes, I did. Uh, my high school was, in, was an American high school in English, uh, but because, well, of course, well, um, the English proficiency was a requirement given that I was coming from uh, Ecuador, mm -hmm. and also because, well, most of the time you don't only apply for one. Uh, university, right? So right, you yeah. you always have to have everything ready. So I did, I, I did take the the TOEFL. The exam. TOEFL, okay, yes. yeah, yeah, and and I know that there are um, a number of different uh, tests that are accepted within the Han. For example, the IELTS, the TOEFL as well, and and perhaps a few a few more too. So there's options out there. Am I right? 
Uh, can you, sorry. Uh, just that there is a number of different tests that are accepted within um, the Han, yes, English-wise? Yes, yeah, so yeah. the requirement is an um, uh, IELTS um, uh, and with a score of 6 for bachelors um, and for some masters a score of 6.5. Um, and uh, TOEFL, the equivalent, um, is around 90, 89, 90. Um, and we also accept Cambridge, uh, English proficiency, um, and there are also different levels yeah. um, of that as well. And so, all of that information, uh, I'm sure it's also available yeah. online on the website. Yes, yeah, so at each program on our website, you'll have a sp uh, uh, quite clearly uh, set out what the uh, criteria are. Yeah. Excellent. Now we have a second question, and that concerns housing. Uh, are pets allowed in accommodation arranged via HAN? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it um, is. I don't think so, but uh, we will have to double check. So we'll uh, uh, we'll check that and put it in the chat. I'm sure my colleagues uh, uh, can figure that one out. Um, also, I think uh, for private accommodation, um, if you want to bring the pet along, check first with the owners. Um, not everywhere is allowed. Uh, are pets allowed. Absolutely. So in some cases, it is the case that the uh, the landlords would put such announcements within yes. their their posts, for yes. example. Other types is not the case. So it's definitely, like you said, very good um, norm to just like, check in advance whether or not that is permitted. Yeah. Because in some cases, I, I know it is in within private accommodation for sure. Now we have one more question. When do you recommend coming to the Netherlands if I start in September? When did you come, Rafael? I came to the Netherlands uh, two weeks before, so by the middle of August, just because, you know, it's such a long trip coming all the way from Ecuador that with my parents we decided to come slightly earlier. We did come to Europe earlier than that, but to the Netherlands we were here two weeks before, so we could explore a little bit. We were around the coast, so Amsterdam, also Rotterdam, and then finally we came to Arnhem. Uh, we explored a little bit of Arnhem, then they dropped me off at my place, uh, mm -hmm. well, at, at my student housing there. And then I started with my intro week, uh, which was pretty great. But uh, there you go. yeah, I definitely recommend uh, coming slightly earlier, a couple of weeks, I would say, nothing too crazy. It's just to get to get acquainted with uh, where you're going to live, to know where grocery stores are and, and stuff like that. Explore a bit of, uh, of the area, especially as an international student. I think that's uh, very useful. Absolutely. So should we just say like mid-August around like yeah, along I think those that's lines? Pretty good. Yeah, and, and definitely you also mentioned the, the introduction week. Of course, that's a, that gives you enough time to attend the introduction week. Mm -hmm. We talked more about that also in the earlier session, but we said like how important that moment is to also get to know some of your classmates and get to know the, the city around. And for sure, especially if you're moving from quite far away, just like you said, it's really nice to have a little bit of lead time when it comes to really like starting with classes. So first you have a little bit of time to, to get acquainted with the city, and then you, you also have a little bit more uh, of this mental space to, to handle the, the beginning of classes. Whereas if everything is happening all at once, um, it can be a little overwhelming at times. Uh, can I apply for two programs simultaneously? What is the, the advice? Um, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. um, in the Netherlands, you're allowed to apply to four programs at the same time. Um, so you can apply to two programs uh, simultaneously. Please be mindful that if you apply to a numerous fixes program, uh, the, the rules are different. Uh, we do not have at Han any numerous fixes programs. So for us, yes, you can apply to two programs, uh, up to four programs simultaneously. But in the end, you will have to make a choice, obviously, of uh, uh, what is the program that you want to study. Um, and also good to uh, finalize that. What is a numerous fixes that you just mentioned? Um, numerous fixes is a program that has a limited number of places. Um, so but that does apply for some programs at other universities. Uh, it doesn't apply for the programs that we offer. Um, again, circling back to the beginning of the session, always check the uh, admission requirements uh, on the website of the programs that um, you are interested in before applying. Then you know exactly what the deadlines are, what you have to do, what the uh, process is of application. So be thorough. Excellent. And on this note, we are going to be wrapping up this session as well. Thank you both so much for joining me along uh, together with this session. Did you have a good time? It yes. was good. 
<laughs> I especially enjoyed Rafael's uh, experiences. It was quite refreshing. So, yeah, uh, so, and good luck with your graduation. Thank you. Yes, thank best you. of luck. Best of luck finalizing your studies. Um, thank you. And thank you guys as well for watching this session. We will be back with a session on visas and scholarships later this afternoon. Thanks again, and I'll see you later. Thank you.